Hi again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Charger 360, telling the stories of the University of New Haven. J.W. Stewart along with Bruce Barber. Bruce, how are you doing today? J.W., I can't tell you how excited I am to be here today. You don't have to tell us. We can just see it on your face. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, we're always excited to, to be here with you, and thank you for watching. And our guest today is Tyler Wells. Tyler's on our baseball team here at the University of New Haven. He's also a grad student pursuing his MBA with a concentration in strategic leadership. Tyler, welcome to the show. It's good yeah. to see you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on and uh, try to answer some questions to the best of my ability. Very good. So you're in the media. We'll get to that. So you're kind of on the other side of the yeah. media. Usually you're asking the questions. Yeah, yeah. I get to see kind of the luxury of both. <laughs> so it's fun. So tell us uh, where you're from and your background and, and how you ended up here at the University of New Haven. Yeah, so I'm from uh, Danville, Vermont. It's a nice little town uh, in northeast Vermont, um, pretty much Canada. If you, if you forget where it is, it's pretty much Canada. Um, and I'd be lying if I said I came to here for anything other than baseball. Uh, I hadn't heard of the University of New Haven or anything really um, until uh, Coach Rispoli, our associate head coach, uh, I met him in New Jersey at a showcase, uh, and then he kind of introduced me to the school, um, we got talking more and more, and then, you know, one thing led to another, I went on a visit, uh, fell in love with the campus, um, realized that the program that I wanted to do, journalism uh, and media studies was really good, uh, and the communications, you know, it drew me in more, and I really found a new home here and a lot more opportunities than I expected to, so uh, I, I like to joke around that I came here for just the baseball, but then <laughs> everything else kind of pulled me in more. So. Yes, uh, Tyler, thank you for the uh, <laughs> shout out for the uh, communication department. <laughs> and I you work with to. our beloved Susan Campbell mm -hmm. on the Charger Bullet, and talk yeah. a little about that. Yeah, um, uh, Campbell's the, the greatest. Uh, I've, I've gotten so lucky to be able to work with her. Um, and honestly, my freshman year, I didn't you know, see myself taking part in really the paper, at least to an extended, you know, to, to much of an extent. And she was the one that really wrote me in, um, as she does. She wouldn't. <laughs> she saw like a hint of potential in me, and wouldn't let me wouldn't let me walk. So, um, you know, I, I've been able to to have her kind of bring me into the Charger Bulletin and uh, get experience that I don't really think I would have gotten at a lot of other schools, um, at least you know to the level that I did and and to the amount of time that I got to spend in it. Uh, but being able to have a fully run, you know, a student run news organization, um, which comes pretty close to a lot of professional. Um, settings uh, as much as we can you know obviously we're still students but being able to have that offering not only for myself but for everyone else coming through has been an, a tremendous leg up and that you know people that I've talked to from other schools that are also pursuing careers in that um, that it's not quite the same everywhere else so we've been really lucky to kind of have that opportunity here. Susan Campbell is a guest on Charger 360 uh, last season and uh, yeah, has been a terrific professor for, for all of us here at UNH mm -hmm. and certainly she's taught you a lot. You mentioned you've been involved with Charger Bulletin News. Tell us about some of the things, the, the roles that you've had and that you've played there with Charger Bulletin News and that you continue to play now as a grad student. Yeah, so um, I started as just you know a contributing writer, uh, nothing very big. Um, one of my old teammates, Zach Pinsons, uh, he was the sports editor my freshman year. Um, and he wasn't really involved with the journalism <laughs> side. He was just kind of doing it because he loves sports. Um, but he got me to write my first, you know, few articles. Um, then, you know, COVID hit. Kind of everything happened. We were we were all home doing stuff remote. Um, and after that, you know, stuff kind of started falling into place more. Uh, and then it all started changing with the paper for me. Is uh, I got COVID in the fall of 2020, um, right before the school had shut down for a month, uh, and. I wrote a 14-day journal, uh, kind of showcasing the experience of what it was like um, being sick, everything like that, being cooped up in a room. Um, and we posted that. And after that kind of happened, you know, my involvement with it just kind of started snowballing more. Um, and I got lucky enough to, to have, you know, our, our editors, and editors at that point see potential in me, um, and Campbell as well. And it led to the next year um, earning, you know, an associate editor spot, which then you know led to me replacing a graduating senior in the managing editor spot, and then the following year um, working as editor in chief. So, in that, you know, I have a lot more experience with the paper side because um, I'm more of you know the writing. Uh, that's where my skill is. I'm not super into. The, I'm not super technical, um, but I can write. And uh, over that time, you know, I've gotten some experience with you know being able to help with charger the broadcast side, um, especially with a lot of the behind the scenes helping with scheduling. Uh, discussing it over with them, helping, you know, in any way that I can. Um, but it's been a good experience to kind of get that well-rounded, you know, it's kind of glimpse into how everything works. Uh, and, and that's the beauty of the Charger Bulletin is because 
you know, it's so tight knit. It's such a small, it's a smaller community, so that everyone, you know, kind of gets a chance to do, you know, what they what they want, what they're interested in. Yeah, it's the same thing we try to do at the radio mm -hmm. station, which is, you know, I try to run it as a, as much like a professional operation mm -hmm. as is possible. And I know Campbell does the same thing with uh, Charger Bullet and Charger Bullet News, which is done right where yeah. we are now in yeah. the same studio. But um, yeah, that seems to be the ethos of the University of New Haven, you know, is, is creating experiential opportunities mm -hmm. and also having faculty uh, such as J-Dub and myself that have worked in our fields and that can kind of pass that on to you mm -hmm. so you can try things on and then see, oh, this is something I'm interested in. Yeah, it's, it's um, I, I tell it to a lot of new students at like, or prospective students at like the open houses and such, um, that there's some things that you'll experience here that aren't really offered at other places um, in terms of, you know, the opportunities that pretty much every professor that I've met has been really willing to push you to kind of create on your own. Um, a lot of it, it's not really, you know, you're not guided. Um, and, you know, for some people, you know, it doesn't work as well, but in general, it forces you to kind of learn how you would learn in the real workplace. Um, so when you kind of get to that point where you, you know, go beyond the university and, you know, start your real life, that, you know, you have that experience, you have those skills already necessary to kind of succeed in that environment. Um, and that's what I try to stress to a lot of students that are considering coming here, especially for the communication department, that you are going to have the chance to, to really experience whatever you need to, um, to kind of, you know, set yourself up for success, you know, after you graduate, once you figure out what you actually want to do um, moving forward. Yeah, uh, you've taken full advantage of all the opportunities here, you know, Charger Bulletin, you're the publisher now, mm -hmm. you said, yep. right? Graduate student. But it was baseball that you mentioned that that's what attracted you here in the mm -hmm. first place. We got a couple of photos of, of Tower playing baseball, which we'll put up here in the monitor. What's that experience been like being on, on the baseball team? This is, this is a team that has a, a big time history mm -hmm. at the Division II level. Yeah, it's, it's been an honor. Um, yeah, I've been extremely blessed for not only to have great coaches, um, but also a great group of teammates through all my, now my fifth year through all those years. Um, and it's funny because, you know, it's been a changing cast. You know, people come and go, obviously, when, once you're there for that long. Um, but it's a family. That's, and I think whenever we talk about the team, that's the best way to kind of sum it up is that it's a, it's a family. Um, we're all together in some way. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of it is that uh, you have a group um, coming in. And it's always hard as a freshman to kind of find your footing, um, especially for me. I, I came here without having anyone, you know, from my hometown that came here far away. Um, and being able to kind of go there and have this, this group of guys that are all, you know, you're all working together for something the same. Every, all, every day you're all working together. Um, it's, it's been a great experience and uh, been lucky enough to, you know, be able to play, get that experience at a high level um, and, you know, being able to do something you love for four or five years while you're still in college, um, yeah. getting a degree makes the school part a little bit easier, makes everything else a little bit more fun. And talk a little about, we were discussing this earlier, the fact that it, being a student athlete really helps you when you get out into the working world. Mm -hmm, for sure. It's, it's, it's definitely it doesn't go overlooked. Um, there's so much stuff that you, know, you have to do behind the scenes as a student athlete uh, between you know, hours of practice, um, film, study, stuff like that. And then even a lot of the stuff that you know, doesn't necessarily show up on a schedule, like you have to get treatment, you know, outside training, stuff like that. Um, it all kind of pays off in the end because you're so busy. You know, you have to have good organizational skills to be able to manage, you know, homework and doing all that, that it carries with it inherent uh, skills and traits that look appealing to employers. Uh, so when that kind of shows up on a resume, uh, they see that, that someone, you know, was able to kind of balance that, you know, work and sport balance and school balance and be able to, to you know, succeed in that. And that for a lot of employers and what I tell, you know, my teammates is that, you know, it's tough to deal with now, uh, but once you kind of get to that point and you're looking for jobs, it's going to give you a leg up uh, in a lot of ways. And, and that's what I've been lucky enough to kind of have that, both of those experiences. You've been voted team dad <laughs> by your teammates. What's your reaction to that, Tyler? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, it's a funny running joke. Um, <laughs> just because I've been here for so long at this point, and I kind of get an idea of how everything works. Uh, 
not only you know within the athletic department, but also you know around here on campus, just because of all my experience with the Charger Bulletin too, that uh, pretty much whoever has a question, they can come to me, um, and I'll answer it. I also you know try to make sure everyone you know is getting home safe. You know they're being you know doing smart things, and, and I think we need to get him uh, <laughs> set up with a dad clothing line. <laughs> get him some dad jeans, some of the sneakers. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 um it's funny. It's and especially now we this year especially we have a, a younger group. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of new guys, you know, first and second year students. That uh, it's it's funny to kind of see how the changing of the guard kind of goes. We we graduated a lot of a lot of players last year, um, but there's a lot more questions. A lot of the little questions that they they need help with. Um, and I'm lucky enough to kind of have that experience, kind of know what to, know what to tell them when they I need can, it. I can teach them some dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah. the only thing I'm missing. You know what's uh, wonderful? Like my kids, they, they do this thing where they just love my jokes, where they roll their eyes. <laughs> that's, that's the best part that, about our guys. Uh, they love it. They, our guys, they, uh, <laughs> they'll definitely, you know, Raz me a little bit because because I am the, the team dad and, and uh, <laughs> that's beautiful. you know that's it's just that's like great. having a group of kids where yeah, they'll, they'll you know try to get on you and um, but it's 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 a family and you know being able to kind of fit into that dad role is something that I enjoy um, and something that you know is definitely a good experience for me you know moving forward and hopefully a leadership position at some point in my future. So long as they're not hitting you up for money. Hey, Dad, I need money <laughs> yeah. to go get pizza. And yeah. Get peppies and if Sally's. I was on, and if I was on that team, I'd be the team infant. <laughs> Would be really it, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to avoid helping them all the financially, but uh, if yeah, I can guide right. them at least a little bit um, yeah, in their I'd, time here. <laughs> how is the team shaping up this year we for, should, for 2024? Uh, we should be good. I get that question a lot. Yeah. Um, last year, we, we had a lot of talent. Uh, we were very old. Um, we had a lot of guys that had come back uh, for their COVID years. Um, and, you know, we were on the right path. Uh, this year, you know, we're very young. We've got a lot of new faces um, mixed with, you know, some of the older guard are still here. Um, but for the most part, you know, we got you know, a lot of new guys where it's like you have kind of question marks. Um, but the talent's there. Um, we're all super close as a team. And I think we improved in the areas that, are not necessarily, they don't always show up on the stat sheet, but um, we improved, you know, speeds were faster, better defensively, um, deeper, which is really important, playing a 48 game schedule. Um, so in terms of all that, the way I kind of look at it is I, I think we got better, um, and I'm always pretty optimistic going into the year, but this year, the, the feeling around everyone is that we have an opportunity to kind of do a lot, um, and the hope is that we can kind of achieve that and as the year goes on get better get more experience of course and uh, we really you know hit our stride once we enter enter conference play and get deeper into the season you know you've touched on it uh, and it's not the first time I've heard it it's interesting is right now we've got the class it's the graduating mm -hmm. class is going to be that class that started during COVID mm -hmm. and so what's that like is it yeah does it, I, I describe COVID sometimes as it felt like it was forever ago and it felt like it was just yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's looking back on it now, it's, it's really, it, it kind of throws my sense of time all off. Um, so I look back, I'm in my fifth year now and it doesn't feel like I've been here for five years. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to be here for a semester before COVID actually hit. Um, and so I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse, it makes it feel like it was even longer ago. Um, but now, you know, we're finally getting to a point where, you know, you're starting to get the college experience again. Um, and, you know, the, the new, you know, younger classes of guys that are coming in are, are, they aren't as exposed to kind of everything that we had to deal with, a lot of that adversity. Um, and it, I think it's an edge for a lot of people that went through it, um, especially, you know, in the college setting and for college athletics is that it was something that caused a lot of uncertainty for, for you know, over a year. Um, and being able to kind of be at this point now where you know you're going to play for the most part, like, and you don't take it for granted anymore. Um, in the past, you know, especially when I was younger, I'd take kind of all that for granted, and uh, COVID flipped that all on its head. You can't take anything for granted. So you kind of enjoy, enjoy the ride, you know, one step at a time as it's going. Um, don't get too far ahead of yourself. And uh, I think that's a good mentality, especially for the younger kids you have, because I look back on it now, and, and those five years went by in a, a snap. And uh, the last thing I want for them is to kind of take it all for granted, and then you're looking back as a senior, and, and time's up. Um, so I guess that's kind of the blessing that I've gotten from COVID and those experiences. We're almost out of time, so last question here, about 30 seconds to go, Tyler. 
wh where is the road going to take you? You said the five years went by like that. Yeah. I mean, wh wh what's, what's next for you? It's a great question. Um, I'm not 100% sure myself. There's a lot of things that I want to do. Uh, I want to stay in baseball in some way, um, and I want to, you know, I like writing. So I want to kind of, if I can find a way to mix those, um, great. Uh, there's some kind of stuff front office-wise that I might want to get involved with, um, scouting. Uh, obviously, with the journalism side, I'm always interested in all, all that. So kind of have to see where it takes me, um, you know, in the next couple of years, and then just kind of know that everything's going to happen for a reason and trust that. Um, but I'm looking forward to kind of figuring it all out. I have the feeling he's going to do just fine. <laughs> To borrow a baseball metaphor, he's going to knock it out of the park. That's right. <laughs> there we go. So, Jacob. <laughs> he's not the only writer here. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> going, going. <laughs> going. Oh, very good. <laughs> we have a few writers here, don't it we? It might go all the way. <laughs> hey, Tyler, thanks for being here on Charger 360. Yeah. It's great to see you. Yeah, great to see you guys. Thank you for having me. Yep. That'll wrap up another edition of Charger 360. For Tyler Wells and Bruce Barber, I'm J.W. Stewart. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Charger 360, telling the stories of the University of New Haven.